On the island of Newfoundland Upon the Selwyn's coast Lies the little town of Virgil To whom all things this told There are so many islands That lie just off her shores And when the cold north wind blows You can hear the billows roar The people from the village Make their living from the sea They like their independence it shows that they are free Some fish in their small boats In the wind, the rain and sleet While others make their living on the offshore Call their fleet If known to share a tragedy Down When the memories overcome, they show their grief with tears. For they have lost some loved ones to the furies of the sea. For heartaches and heartbreaks are locked in memory. This village. It's got beauty carved on its rugged shore. Seven miles of pure white sand. Who could ask for more? The mountains and the valleys where the rivers run so fast. And the salmon rise to the sportsman's fly as he makes another cast Tell the people of this village love their native home for anyone who goes away oh surely will return It's like that life Rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul. What makes this rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul? Good evening and welcome to this week in review. Tonight in our stories we have drill competition, photo shoot. Wharf Construction, Windstorm, Marine Service Center, Boat Video. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. Try Your Luck and Play TV Bingo on Wednesday sponsored by the grad class. Cards are 6 for $5 and can be bought from any student of the grad class or in most stores around town. The RCSCC 157 Bot Bartlett as many in Virgil now for about 52 years. To date, there are 30 youths involved with the cadets. Some activities the cadet does involves traveling out of town. The past weekend, 13 cadets went to Ganner to participate in a drill competition. They used the same drill display as used in their annual ceremonial review. This is the first time they have participated in seven years. It was done as a western and central zone competition. Seven teams took part. An inspection also took place. Our cadets did very well. It will be several weeks for they know exactly how they did. Air cadets from Cornerbrook and Lewisport were in the top two. The cancer relay team Pink Warriors had a photo shoot on Wednesday. They used an Olympic torch and uniform that Mr. Gord Ingram used when he carried the torch in November. Parents brought their children up to the community center to have their pictures taken with the torch and uniform in front of a Canadian flag. Approximately 60 children and adults took part. 
and $135 was raised. The Pink Warriors would like to thank all those who came out and participated. Since December, a construction company named Brooks Construction has been doing work and repairs to the ferry wharf. Work began the first week of December and is expected to be completed by the end of March. Some of the work included bumpers placed along the wharf where the ferry docks, replacing timbers on top and underneath the wharf along with other repairs. Three men from Burgio have been hired on. They are Roy Aris, Dave Piercy, and Alistair Barter, along with two other men from out of town. They work in all the winds and weathers, but have been truly blessed with the winter that we have been having. The Health Committee challenged all community organizations and groups to take some action to create awareness of violence and say no to violent behavior in our community throughout the month of February. Eleven groups responded. Two winners were randomly drawn out of a bay. The winners were the snack program, which yelled a breakfast with focus on violence prevention with Ursie Kisses messages from the Health Committee, and Mrs. Heather Bellard who presented a slideshow to the teachers on bullying and violence. 
on Thursday night and Friday morning. Bergia was hit with a windstorm. The wind gust was reported to be over 115 kilometers per hour. The wind caused some damage around town. Garbage bins were overturned and siding was blown off the side of the house and cable and phone wires were also blown out. On Friday, I went down to the Marine Service Center to have a look at the work that was being done. Arbor Authority Chairperson June Iscott, along with Max Stonford, a member of the Fishermen's Committee, walked me through the work being done. Thank you, Maxine, for coming down and having an interest in the Marine Service Center, what we call it. Um, we were doing improvements. Small craft harbors and uh, fisheries and oceans have given us a $35,000 contract. We've been able to create two jobs uh, that started in January for, for three months for two people in Burjo. And uh, so we're improving our services and our building here. So we always worked out of an office upstairs, but we wanted to have an office downstairs. So if you look around, you can see some of the improvements that have been made now we will have this small space here will be an office and we will be able to greet the public as soon as they come in through our doors out here as you can see uh, the there's a lot of work still going on still left to be done out here in this front room but if you follow me over here uh, Maxine as well as servicing the fishing industry and the workers of course we also provide you know items uh, throughout the year that they need for fixing their things and then also I mean we do have yachts and different boats coming into Burgio and sometimes they're looking for shower facilities they're looking for um, laundry services and so if you come on out here now we have a very lovely new improved washroom facility here a shower uh, lots of space and kind of stuff here which uh, you know we had a we had a much smaller washroom facility before and out here is a laundry room a uh, little bit of supplies here right now and we are getting new washer and dryer um, but these are services that people want and so uh, if we are going to manage ourselves as a business and we need to be generating money all the time and that is what we're trying to do basically is to improve our services. So Maxine, part of our services is taking up boats for the winter of course and storing them here and uh, so you know there's uh, lots of lovely boats I tell you. Something else we've been working on, Maxine, is trying to improve uh, our maintenance of our travel lift. Uh, this is the big machine that takes in all the heavy boats, and last year uh, we had $15,000 worth of work done on it, and uh, we're hoping to get a bit more work done in the future as well. But this is a very important piece of machinery for our service organization. And part of our improvement plan uh, also included this floating dock. Now, this is not a part of our, you know, uh, the $35,000 contract, but this was already done last year. Uh, this is something that uh, was in the works for a very long time and was very much needed. And our fishermen tell us now that they would really like to have more of these floating docks as well. And this is this was a $60,000 contract, believe it or not. A uh, lot of money, uh, the small craft arbors and fisheries and oceans and the government of Canada has been providing to uh, our Harbor Authority and others of course. Maxine, the big overall plan as well is to pave our parking lot. This is something else that we've needed for a long time. They did come down and start the work last year and hopefully uh, it, you know, we're going to have an early spring and some of this work will also be done now coming up very soon but everybody's very happy to know that this is going to be paved this year.
So then everybody's been listening to all of the budget information and uh, of course uh, all of these improvements to our harbor is part of Canada's economic action plan and uh, so the pavement and, uh, and, and other things, our improvements to the Marine Service Center as well as some of the stuff we're going to show you now. Part of our contract includes uh, hiring a local artist, Travis Dernford. He's making us a new painting. Uh, actually, he's making one for the Furby's Arbor Sletway as well. And, uh, and it'll have our new rates and information on there. And of course, it's a good opportunity for us to show off Travis's talent. And Mr. Max Dernford over there, he's actually on the board of directors of the Burjo Harbor Authority. And uh, we're going to also show you the improvements that uh, is committee the fishermen's committee uh, got some money from fisheries and aquaculture and uh, they get money for the materials and uh, they have to do the work themselves so when they all finish their fishing and stuff they've all volunteered to do a bunch of improvements as well that we're going to show you now shortly so there was new vinyl siding put on the outside of the building We also had a problem with the meter base and so a local electrician had to be hired to get a whole new system put up there so that's a very good thing. What was done in here? Well we've done all the painting here and we replaced all the tables, put all new tables in. These are tables. What are these tables used for Max? And they were in pretty bad shape, weren't they, they were before gone. they were replaced? Yeah. And if you continue on into the next room, Maxine, you see the lovely paint job that they did as well. And we also played another ramp this year. We got so it's going to be approved enough time to stay in toilet. Yes, to do what what might be well, your new improvements now? Well we finished up the 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 bathroom and the washing and some more painting. Well that's good. And he's he's on outside. Okay. And Maxine, the, the improvements to the bait depot here is provided by uh, the money is provided by fisheries and aquaculture. And so these fellows as volunteer committee, they have to apply for money every year to do these improvements. And, and it's, a, it's about a three to $5,000 grant, depending on how many people apply for the money. And so I think Burjo's very lucky, eh, Max, that, uh -huh. uh, that fisheries and aquaculture supports these improvement projects. And of course, uh, you know, I mean, uh, when you have a, a, a nice workplace, uh, the work doesn't seem as hard. Maxine, just to conclude, I'd just like to um, point out to the community that, uh, you know, this Harbor Authority is really, really important to not only our community, but these, the other communities along our coast. And, uh, you know, since I've been the chairperson for the past couple of years, uh, you know, all the time, more and more, I'm understanding uh, how important it is to the community. But, you know, Maxine, it's a very big responsibility uh, for a group of volunteers to have to manage a facility like this. You talk about management of the overall facility. We talk about we need people here to actually, uh, you know, use some of the equipment that we have out uh, you know on the parking lot that we just looked at there's a uh, bookkeeping and accounting that has to be done that is very very important when you're reporting to anywhere but like to the federal government and um, so then I just uh, you know want to put that out there that I really believe strongly that we have to try to make government understand that we also, you know, while we very much appreciate the money that they provide to us 
to be able to, especially to create jobs and to hire two fellows from our community this year. Uh, and to have the improvements money, we also need to have money to have a person hired. It wouldn't be a year-long position, of course, because it is a seasonal industry, but we really believe, and I think all of the board of directors would agree with me, that there needs to be money put in place from small craft harbors to actually manage and run these facilities. It's a lot of work for a group of volunteers, but we do want to thank small craft harbors and, of course, um, the overall community, all everybody out there who supports us. So thanks a lot for your interest and uh, hope you have a good day. Hey, Marsden, let me use some pictures he had of boats used around air and other parts of Newfoundland. I put together a little video for of them for you to watch. I've seen it all, the rise and fall, now the fishing stocks are gone. It's a different way of life, but we'll go on. We'd face the icy winds and cold out on the northern sea Where the cot stocks made eleven ones for me And I remember years ago when men they made their daily catch They cut down from the heads of fish we For a buck a pound, we'd all go down close by the water's edge And we'd wait for skulls to fall down from the ledge But if I stare out long enough over the mist up on the bay I can still see men in the morning sail away I believe I see a fish in my dream from on this log Rise from the seas like ghosts out in the fog But time moves on, our lives did change Some friends will see no more As we boarded up the windows and the doors There once more at an empty shore where Cape Flood used to race And we leave for good, the tears roll down our face But if I stare out long enough over the mist up on the bay I can still see men in the morning
still see men in the morning sail away And I believe I see a fish in my dream on this log Rides from the seas like ghosts out in the fog They rise from the sea This concludes our program for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.